Hey, welcome everybody. How's it going? I just had this feeling right before we joined, I'm just like, I don't have a good intro. I just, I'm like, hey, what's up? No, I, I need to work on that a little bit. Maybe you guys can help me sort of concept a little bit. That just sort of hit me. Felt a little self-conscious. What am I gonna say? What's going on everybody? Uh, welcome to Designing Adobe XD. I am Talon Wadsworth. I'm the lead. <laughs> I do love that. That intro is better. See, I just feel like I, I come in behind that intro, Kita, and I'm just like, what do I have to say? I don't know. Let's, uh, <laughs> what's going on? I'm Talon Wadsworth. I'm the lead designer of Adobe XD. Uh, I'm here with you on a Friday, the early show this week. Uh, I like, you guys like this early show? This early show is pretty good. You know, gonna get it, you know, get me excited, get right off the train, get right here to the studio. I uh, got my got my friend Paco over here running the show. Uh, we we are uh, we're bringing it to you live. We're going to be talking about XD today. Matthias, you made it. I know it's a little earlier than than usual. Kids still up. <laughs> uh, Nikita, how's it going? Not necessarily a new hat. Um, the polar bear. New shirt though. New shirt though. That's pretty good. Um, what's going on, Michael? How's it going? It's your pal, Talon. Let's let's try that. Hey everyone, it's your pal, Talon. I'm here with you to talk about XD, all things XD, give you give you a little insight into how we work as a team, uh, maybe give you a little insight into how I work as a designer. Um, you know, yeah, we can cover a lot of things. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Um, how's everybody doing? Daniel, Pokey, Matthias, Kita, Felix, what's up? Osama, great to see you on the chat there. Panka, Pankaj, Panka, Pankaj. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna screw a bunch of these up. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> Oksana, how's it already doing? Oh, okay. This is <laughs> just tune out Mr. Bean's holiday there, Matthias. Um, good, excellent. How's it already doing? Um, Kashish, I uh, saw somebody. I think Xavier Xavier from Mexico. How's it going, everybody? You guys, uh, you guys doing something cool today? Designing some stuff, working in XD. Um, of course, I love seeing all the great work that you're doing in NXT. So if you, you ever want, you know, some feedback. Again, uh, I'm a big believer in feedback, just makes us better designers. So if you ever wanna shoot me a uh, something you're working on, I love checking it out. I love seeing what you're working on, uh, at Mr. Talon on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I love seeing it. Yeah, Friday, here we are. Um, I actually, speaking of Twitter, today's topic was actually inspired uh, by, by a tweet. Um, of course, you know, us on the Adobe XD team, you know, we're very active on Twitter. We're always out there, of course, in the community. Um, I was, uh, of course, you know, when I travel, I, I feel like I use Twitter a whole lot more. And so I was in, uh, I was in Japan and Korea, North of South Korea, not North Korea, uh, the last couple of weeks. And when I was there, as I was coming back, I came across a tweet. Um, someone was asking about plugins. Um, which is a great topic. Um, I love talking about plugins. And in fact, I've been working on developing a few myself. In fact, there's one out there we'll talk about today that I created with my good pal, Peter Flynn, uh, the lead designer, I'm sorry, lead engineer on Extensibility for XD. Uh, pretty cool. So I'm a big, I'm a user of plugins, uh, going like way back to like the Photoshop and Illustrator days. Um, in fact, at the end, maybe I'll even share one of my favorites um, from the Illustrator days that uh, unfortunately is defunct now, but I still, I keep a very special version of Illustrator on my machine just to use that one plugin. Uh, but plugins, it's hard to know where to get started. And that was kind of this tweet that I saw, which is like, how do you get started with plugins? How do you even know which plugins are right and where to use them and where to plug them into your workflow? As it were, <laughs> um, you know, as the as the name suggests, um, you know, plugins are super powerful because uh, we essentially have created this platform in XD uh, and we, now that we've sort of opened it up, you know, anyone can develop and extend the workflows of XD, do cool and new exciting features in XD, um, you know, connect it to bigger workflows kind of out there, whether it's, you know, with your team or on the web, you know, posting to places like Dribbble, um, right? There's just like so much, so many, so much possibility in that, but it's a little intimidating, right? It's a little bit of that problem of like, sort of like starting with a blank slate. You know, you're sort of faced with this, like now, I think there's over 150 plugins in XD since we launched them um, in the fall of last year. And it's hard to know, like, like where do you get started? 
So that's what we're going to be talking about today, is we're going to be talking about kind of how uh, to start with plugins, um, how to start to fold them into your workflows, uh, into your design process inside of XT. And then uh, at the end, I'm going to share some of my favorites. Well, probably actually throughout all of this, because, um, you know, really, again, like plugins are only as good as you make them really, and, and was as good as you and sort of integrate them into your flow. Um, and so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, are, are you any of you using plugins in XD? Uh, do you have any favorites? Uh, feel free to share them. Um, we're going to be talking about all things plugins all day, so let me know. Um, Kita, that's great to know. Chicago, finally seeing some sun. Um, what's up, Namana? Namanha? Namanha? Uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, having a, good, having a good time. This is my favorite part of the week. Um, you know, hanging out here with all of you. So, <laughs> yeah, Michael's now, we're gonna have that stuck in our head all day long, that jingle. So, thanks for that. <laughs> um, I also wanna give a shout out because it came up last week. Um, if any of you are over catching me on YouTube, um, if you want to make sure that you can chat with us, come over to the Behance page, uh, b.net slash live. Uh, that way you can join the conversation. Again, we, we have the chat up from the Behance page, and I'm not seeing the chat on YouTube. So if you're over there on YouTube, be sure to hop over to the Behance page. Again, it's the same stream, just different front end, right? Just different front door. So um, yeah, so here we go. Um, well, I'd be, Kashish, um, yeah, I don't, well, we could review something. I mean, we could do that. We do, we do, I haven't done a portfolio review in a while. We should do that. Kita really likes Angle. We're gonna be talking about Angle today. Um, yeah, so here we go. Let's kick it off in on uh, my my desktop here. Here, I actually have just started XD. I'm on the home screen, the start screen here. And if you know, if you sort of just go up here, and I know sometimes it's sort of like you know, you're just in, you want to get working. You know, like this gives you all the things you need to just sort of jump start and get right into working. But here down the left hand side of the start screen uh, is an add on section, and this is kind of kind of the sort of gateway into the plugins world. And so here we actually are highlighting again some of those really great, really highly polished plugins uh, that uh, again, we think are, are a great places to get, to get going with those. Um, so here you've got uh, a bunch of plugins as well as sort of UI kits and, and app integrations, which is an important part of this story as well. Uh, they sort of help you again start to uh, either jumpstart your process with some with some content, or you know add some new tools you know to XD, or extend your work kind of into uh, kind of other other sort of processes, other sort of tools that you might use. Again, one of the things that I think plugins are really good for is for extending work from XD you know, into these other other places. Um, you know things uh, like you know being able to publish to Dribble, um, being able to do cool things when you post your links inside of Jira, um, you know, being able to pull in great content. Again, this sort of all sort of give you ways to sort of, again, extend or enhance your work both inside of and outside of XD. So that's sort of the, like the greatest place, the, the sort of places um, that plugins really work the best. Um, so here, you know, so we've got a bunch of these to sort of choose from. Um, I'm gonna install one. Let's see if I haven't installed it because I actually probably have installed a lot of these. Oh, change case. <laughs> so again, some of these, um, again, are, are adding new functionality like to XD um, and change case is kind of one of those. So when we're here and we're sort of looking at, um, you know, this, this screen here, we can actually use this to just directly install uh, any plugins. And what this will do is it actually launch the plugin installer. Um, and the plugin installer is kind of where you can browse every plugin that's available uh, for XD, and you can also um, sort of see all the ones that you currently have installed. So again, I can go here and I can browse kind of all the plugins, and there's some there's new ones sort of popping up kind of all the time, uh, and I can see all the ones that I have installed. And you can see I have quite a few installed. Uh, I see some people sort of shouting out a few um, in the in the in the chat here, and then we're gonna be talking about uh, a couple of these today. Um, yeah, the, so the first, so the ones that we're gonna sort of start with today um, are really ones that I think can, can, part of sort of, you know, can onboarding into plugins is figuring out kind of where they fit, right? And I think, you know, all designers kind of have a challenge of integrating new tools into their workflows. 
And I, I remember this like way back from like my earliest days using like Photoshop and Illustrator is that you know everybody um, you know finds a way to work right inside of the tools and that's usually through a lot of hard work, you know a lot of time invested to sort of figure out sort of the, the, the optimal way for you to work, right? And you can kind of and then you sort of you know you build up that process of say working inside of Photoshop or Illustrator or XD and you you kind of work that way and you you repeat it over and over again because we're all professionals and we're all just trying to uh, you know like make money you know, at the end of the day uh, and so we need you know something that we can really rely on and to go back to and whenever we're starting a project or whenever we're working through a project inside of our tools right we 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 sort of we we build something that we can rely on Right, sort of I do this and then I do this and then I do this. And sometimes what happens is it's really hard to, to change, right? It's really hard to inject or figure out just the best ways to sort of, again, sort of add on to your workflow, right? Any, so any, any slight change, and this is something that we sort of learned through, you know, a lot of research, a lot of me sort of thinking about my own process is that, you know, it's hard. It's hard to change. It's hard to find the best way to integrate new, new, new tools and new features into your workflow. Um, so again, plugins, plugins are in that, in that realm, right? Plugins are in the space where like, again, like how do I get started? I've installed some, but now how do I figure out you know, how they can help me work better? Um, yes, Alex, actually, I'm going to go and install ro Rotato, 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 Rotato. Uh, Howard Pinsky has been doing some really amazing stuff with uh, Rotato. Uh, you should go check out some of his streams. Uh, what's going on, everybody who's just joining us? Uh, Munir, great to see you. Harish, Scott, Alex, Angelique, Omar, how's everybody doing? Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna install some of these right now and start to try and figure out where some of these might fit. So what's cool about the plugins section here is you can actually you can see a little bit from the developer uh, about about the tool they've created. And again, these developers are are sometimes designers just like us. Uh, sometimes they're again they're they're those designers who can code and they're those maybe so more leaning on the engineering side or their teams you know other sort of third party tools uh, like um, Cloud App or you know some of these other sort of teams that again have spent some time and developed a tool and uh, if they follow kind of the developer process they can actually submit their their plugin to sort of show up here inside of XD. So Rotato just showed up. I'm super excited. I'm going to install that. It's really fun. No, uh, actually, what's, what's really great about the plugin architecture that the team has built here uh, is that once you sort of develop your plugin for XD and you, and you sort of submit it and get it published, uh, you know, for XD, it's both, it's both platforms simultaneously. So it's Mac and Windows, so all these plugins are available across Mac and Windows. Uh, really exciting. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'm gonna install Rotato. I'm also gonna do, this is a great one that I tried out recently, this multi-grid generator. Really awesome. Ooh, color scale. Uh, I'm gonna go, what does that do? A plugin that can generate color scale. Select one text rectangle or ellipse node and run the plugin, and you can get graded colors from the node. Oh, that's see, super handy. Uh, you know, all of these sort of plugins, uh, the sort of information the developers are sort of giving us here. These are all really awesome. World Ready is also a really great one. We're gonna install that because I wanna talk about it. It's one of my favorites. Um, all right, so we've got a bunch of them installed. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and we're gonna launch a new uh, a new document. And we're gonna check it out. We're gonna see what's going on here. All right. Um, yeah, Omar, Rotato should be on Windows. So you should go check it out. Um, yeah, Matthias, if, if anyone, I don't, I'm interested, has anyone done their own plugins? Um, if you want a little crash course in that, uh, there's a previous episode, uh, I don't, I'm trying to remember the number now, it might be something like 30 um, on designing Adobe XD, where I actually brought in uh, Peter Flynn, and he's the lead engineer on extensibility, and he and I created a plugin like on the show. So you should go check it out if you want a little crash course, and the team has created some great documentation. So yeah, you should check it out. All right, so here we are, and um, today uh, we're going to be actually adding to this kind of all this here. But today, once you install plugins, it's sort of available to you via the plugin uh, dropdown up here. So this shows you kind of all the plugins that that I have installed. Uh, but again, 
how do we fit these into our workflow? Kind of what are they best suited for? Some of them are really great for sort of ideating or designing um, or building up again those raw components that I'm going to use to then design uh, my app or my or my website. Um, and some of them are really great for um, bringing stuff into my design. Again, stuff from outside, content from other places, um, you know, could be from services um, like UI Faces or from uh, content that I have inside of Google Sheets. Things that can really then inject into my design so that I can sort of I can get get going even faster. Um, and then there are things that that I can do with my designs kind of once I've got them done. Uh, things that are really more focused on like things like presentation. Um, and then we have things that again extend, and I can take my work and then publish them into kind of other other workflows or other services that I use or maybe alongside my team. So one of the ones, let's let's try some of these drawing ones because I think these are these are these some of these ones that really impact kind of how I'm working kind of on Canvas. Um, you know, that's that's maybe let's just start there because those are ways again you you really have to try those and figure out again which ones are sort of best sort of suited to sort of you know uh, build you know sort of change or or uh, you know, so sort of supercharge your workflow. Um, so one of the ones that I loved, which we just installed, which was the sort of color scale. So if I was creating maybe kind of a little sort of you know, global system for my app. And that's kind of a place that, if you've sort of followed me on some other um, streams, that I really like to start. I like to start to sort of get my feet wet with the design, start sort of giving kind of an overall look and feel to my design. And so what I've done is I've sort of pulled some colors in real quick. And if I really wanted to sort of like play with color or really start sort of building up some of the some of those those um, sort of style elements, there are really great plugins. And I, I'm going to try that color scale because I think it sounded really intriguing. Um, so what, what you want to do when you sort of run a plugin is you have a selection sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you start with a selection and you go up and you go to the plugins menu and you run it, you click on it. And what that will do is it will actually run the plugin. And right now, uh, the UI surface of the team has sort of created for developers uh, is this sort of um, native sheet, this sort of modal dialog. And this modal dialog now kind of has like all the settings for me to kind of run uh, the, the plugin for. So the color scale developer, really awesome, has said, uh, give me, give me some sort of UI to play with here. Um, again, uh, we've got sort of now I see the color of the object that I have selected is sort of shown to me here. Oh, and I can choose uh, scale mode. I can say scale to white. That's pretty cool. Scale to black. Uh, scale to a complementary color. Ooh, that's really nice. Um, or to a random color, which could get some wild results. So let's just sort of um, let's just, just try it out. Let's go to white. Scale length 100 to uh, let's say 2 to 100. We're going to go like every, I think, 10%. So we've got 10. We want 10 steps. So we're going to go 10% sort of scale. Uh, I used to do this in Illustrator, and I would copy and paste and go up to the to the color picker and change, you know, by percentage, uh, just to do this this exact thing. So I'm I'm really excited about this. So um, let's see. So I, let's just run it. This is the default settings. Going to run it. Oh wow! Look, that's super nice. I took that selection. And out here on the pasteboard, again, uh, so it doesn't really affect my design, but that's really nice. That's really nice behavior. Um, then what it's done is it's now sort of taken that and just sort of nicely scaled it out. Taken that color and now sort of just nicely sort of gradation from like, you know, the darkest to white. Oh, that was really slick. Hey, Sarah, what's up? It's great to see you in there, Sarah. Uh, was one uh, of a duo that uh, created, of course, my my very favorite plugin that we're going to get to in just a bit. So, hold on for that. So uh, that's super cool. I really love this color scale. I'm going to run it one more time. Let's go to a complementary color, um, and this is great for sort of building up my sort of system of style elements. Ooh, wow, that's cool. Nice to this nice sort of dark green. That looks pretty good. Let's run it one more time. Oh, I gotta select something. Color scale it. Let's go to a random color. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. That looks pretty good. So with this, so this is really cool. Um, 
you know, again, like a, just a way to sort of start generating some of those color palettes, um, some of those style elements, you know, tools like that, um, tools like um, blend colors, which is the one that um, uh, Peter and I did, which is actually kind of similar to this one, um, where you can actually take two selections and you can specify the number of steps and you can actually blend those colors. So it actually kind of gets you kind of the same result. That's pretty cool, very complimentary. Um, so one of the other ones that, the, the other sort of style of uh, plugins that I love, that I really find useful in my work, is actually ones that uh, help me sort of pull in sort of content. Again, you know, any designer, you know, needs to be designing with real content or content that can, again, at least sort of um, simulate, again, some of those scenarios that I might run into. And, you know, if you're super, um, you know, if, you, if you're super lucky, you get to work with that content person directly and they're sort of feeding stuff to you. You've got a nice one little bundle, but sometimes, you know, you just need something representational to get going. Uh, and especially in the early concepting phase. And so um, I was sort of having this idea, I'm, I'm speaking at a conference in Toronto next month to do like a little like, um, you know, sort of speaker lineups, um, sort of, you know, an app for the, for, the, um, for the conference where you can actually sort of see, you know, the, all, the present, all the sort of upcoming presentations and maybe get a little info on some of those, um, you know, um, some of the speakers who are gonna be speaking. So I'm gonna just make a quick little, little sort of browser for the presenters. Um, and I'm just gonna, you know, just do a little something like this. Maybe I can sort of, there's a little scrollable area, you know, something um, where I can find out a little bit more about them. But of course, you know, what I, let's see if I do see presenters and put this here. So, you know, of course I'm gonna make a repeat grid and I'm gonna drag that out. But of course, again, usually what I do is I need, I need to put some faces in here and you know, start seeing how this is going to, going to roll. Uh, Omar, yes, I actually need to have that. Uh, <laughs> no problem, Gus. Thanks for, thanks Adobe Live for, uh, for the little shout out there. Um, yes, Adobe Color Plugin, working on that. Um, I, I can share that another time but um so what i want to do here is of course like bring in just some quick sort of faces for this you know some avatars and my friends of course uh know very well that i like to use them in my designs but you know you little you know the same people start showing up in my designs all the time i have this little folder of avatars but um this is one of my favorite plugins is ui faces and i think somebody mentioned that earlier as well is actually being able to sort of um, just pull in uh, a bunch of sort of avatars, you know, avatar ready sort of um, sort of images. And UI Faces is one of my favorite plugins. Again, UI Faces is in that class of plugins that really sort of help accelerate my design by bringing in content and and placing it uh, right into my design so I can start designing around it. Um, so what I want to be able to do is uh, go in there and I can actually sort of set a bunch of cool sort of settings and variables. I can say, where do I want to pull in um, content from? So in this case, maybe I wanna do Unsplash and maybe Diverse UI, and I can actually specify an age range, which is really cool, it's sort of reading the metadata of these images. And I can say, you know, maybe this is a real kind of like female-driven conference, so I'm gonna select female here. Uh, do some happiness levels. Now we don't have to have everybody be happy. That's totally fine. Uh, hair color, I won't specify here. Could be anywhere. Maybe randomize. Let's say yes, and let's click apply faces and see what happens. Oh, I forgot. So repeat grid was not supported, uh, again, as in the extensibility layer when we first started. So let me actually just ungroup this real quick. And let me select these all again. And let's try, let's run that one more time. UI faces. There. Oh, group, group, okay, on group. You have to have, so, you know, plugins are really sometimes about trial and error. And what's great is that the developers are able to sort of show you these error states, which is really nice. So let's run UI faces again, apply those faces. Again, I've selected those boxes. I had seven selections. They are filled with avatars. Excellent, look at that. It was so easy to sort of get my design up and, up and going. Right, this, these tools like this are just so handy. And actually Sarah, who's on the, the stream, 
she and my friend Peck Pong Peck Pong Pat. I just killed his name again. I always, I'm so sorry, Peck, if you're watching. Um, uh, of impeccable design, uh, Sarah um, and, and Peck created one of my favorite ones, which was um, a Google Sheets plugin. And I'm gonna run that real quick. So, um, you know, a lot of times, what, of course, when I'm lucky, I um, have a content partner, sort of content uh, designer, creator, who's actually creating um, uh, content for me, for my design. And what we can do here is actually go into, uh, say if they provide it to me uh, in a Google Sheet. Uh, here, I had sort of been making a little app um, sort of on sort of the Kurosawa um, sort of films. Um, and so I had this sort of sheet here that has all these um, sort of, you know, all these uh, sort of titles in it, film titles in it. And what I can do with Google Sheets this is really handy is I can go and just actually copy and paste this URL and actually bring in all that content into my design. So I'm gonna redesign this real quick so we have a little bit better layout for the films of Kurosawa because I've included images here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, this is gonna be film title and we'll do the director and we'll do year. All right, change those to that. All right, put that there, okay. So now what's really cool about Google Sheets is I can go and run the Google Sheets plugin and I didn't do a couple things here. I can load a .csv if I have it locally uh, or I can paste in a public link, which is my favorite option. So I can go and I can just paste in that link from that Google Sheet and based on my selection, I can map my selection to the columns in my Google Sheet, right? So again, uh, Sarah and Peck's uh, plugin here is looking at what I have selected on Canvas, and I can actually map it to uh, to my um, let's see to my do I have a date date to my Google Sheet? So my year to date, film title, film title. I'm not going to randomize my content, and I'm going to hit apply. Now let's see, did it do it? It didn't take my image. I was having this problem with it the other day. Okay, let's try this again. Google Sheets, paste the public link, bam. Oh, that's got a little, little problem there. Let's, let's run that again. There we go. And just boom right into into here. And actually, there's one more I want to uh, cover because I saw her on the chat. Uh, Katerina, Katerina, who's on the chat here, created a great plugin uh, with some beautiful work. Um, again, ways to sort of inject things into your design. You can actually, um, one of my favorites is this uh, Undraw, which is Katerina's uh, plugin that I'm really, really, really excited to see. And what's cool is that Katerina has just sort of made available to everyone these beautiful illustrations. So if you're doing something like creating like an onboarding for your app, uh, or you need a little spot illustration for your editorial page, she's just like, here you go. Here's this beautiful work. And one of my favorite parts about this plugin is you can actually sort of theme that uh, those those drawings before you sort of bring them into your into your design, those illustrations. And you can just do that by selecting the primary color here. And uh, so you can select one of the ones that you want here. I really like this one. And what it does is just, just sort of applies that, that primary color and you've now downloaded it to your clipboard and I can just now go and paste that directly into my XD file. Super awesome. Uh, Katerina does lovely work. Uh, it's great to see it. So I can sort of start combining this. Again, these are just ways to help me get going, help jumpstart my process. Um, again, a lot of these are really trial and error, but I really encourage you to go out there and find a plugin that sort of fits best uh, you know, for your workflow. 
Um, and of course, this like half hour just like flew by. But you know, I really hope that you know maybe this maybe got your feet wet with plugins, got you interested to go and explore. Again, if you have any favorites, uh, yeah, there's bugs, Sarah. Look at this, catching bugs for you. Go check them out. Um, so let me know what your favorites are. Um, if you have any, any that uh, that you'd love to share, tweet them at me. Love to love to go and explore them again. There's so many exciting ones. I I feel like I, I wanted to get to so many more today. Um, and of course, you know, if you're interested in in developing your own plugin, uh, like Katarina did and, and Sarah, um, we have some great developer resources for you that I think I saw pasted in the chat. Um, and uh, yeah, really great places to get going. So um, yeah, good luck. Uh, have fun. Go and play and explore and find great new tools to add to your workflow inside of XD. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week.